Just very quickly, in the next uh, few minutes, just uh, take a look at the other stories making headlines in newspapers this morning. Um, very quickly, uh, Dismas, uh, page three of the Sunday, Nash, Sunday Standard, uh, dressed to kill. This is a story of uh, politicians, uh, m most of them uh, allied to the Jubilee side, uh, you know, uh, dressed in military uh, attire in, in some of these political rallies, uh, including nom nominated Senator Cecily Mbarire and the Kirinyaga governor, Ann Waiguru. Uh, even supporters have been uh, spotted in replica military uniforms, which is something that, um, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's against the law. What, what is your take on this? Well, when I saw that, I, I spoke with the lawyer who told me, in fact, that's a, a breach of uh, laws. That if you look at the relevant acts of forming the KDF and uh, the Kenya police, that that's a breach and uh, somebody should have acted on that. Because you see, when they're in the streets, you, you don't know whether they're members of the Jubilee Brigade or whether, in fact, they're members of the security agencies. But maybe that's an issue for the Inspector General of Police and uh, the DPP. But when you're trying to look at the underlying philosophy as to why they're addressing that way, I, I think the, the originator of the idea is looking at uh, countries that have had uh, revolutionary regimes, that are, you, you have a, a revolutionary taking office, and they still maintain that fatigue. Like, yes. for instance, you would go to Uganda uh, across the road. That when um, Seveni took over, he established the National Resistance Movement and the National Resistance Army. And a number of the people who took up a political position were, in fact, still serving within the military and they maintained their positions. So one would assume that that's the intention they were looking at. And um, another perspective is that uh, Jubilee is reminding all Kenyans who is, uh, who is in office, who is uh, running the show, <laughs> that right. uh, in case it's lost on observers, that uh, yes. President Kenyatta is still uh, head of state. Mark, what is your take on this? You know... It's been from the Jubilee side mostly. You will notice it's not the Jubilee side. There's something called the Women's Brigade. And one of the things that uh, you need to realize about political parties is different arms of a political party are allowed to identify themselves the way they please. Right. This is not and common. You've seen it in the ANC, you'll see it in Ghana, where um, the women's brigade chooses to dress a certain way. Now, how women dressed in army fatigues is a threat for a man such as Dismas, I don't know. I don't think well, it's being, just a threat ah, to me. It's let me a finish. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's at the national <laughs> level. Let me finish. Yeah, do not let confuse me, me with the law. <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. It is not a threatening move to have ladies wearing army fatigue. Imperson okay? Impersonating not, security agencies. No, I don't think they're impersonating security agencies. Their hearts are red. Let's start there. Okay? And two, it is, it is a symbol of the unity of the women within Jubilee to march towards progress, not to march towards war. You All don't right. use women for war. All right, Hezbo. <laughs> This this is uh, a narrative that uh, situated broadly is trying to counter the daughters of Raila narrative. You know, they came out, they were sleek, uh, they were doing things, and Jubilee had to react. And I think the reaction that we are seeing from Jubilee is trying to communicate where power resides. And the fact that even if uh, the other side of the political divide has uh, diligent followers among the women, they have women who are not just uh, diligent followers but gallant soldiers. They're trying to evoke that, that, that uh, image of these are fighters for the, 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 the current uh, government uh, mm -hmm. fighting for Uhuru Tano Tena, which from where I see it is a brilliant move All from right. a communication point of view. Yeah, I, I want to agree with Esbon. This is just about a political organization and mobilization. And uh, they, they thought that strategy is good for them and uh, somehow it seems to be working now that uh, uh, the likes of uh, Dismas are very jittery about it. <laughs> if you go to South Africa, for instance, actually the official title of the, the EFF party leader is CIC. He's commander-in-chief, you can imagine. Mm. It is just a strategy for political, and we have Zuma, who's the, 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 the but, legitimate But what does the law say? I mean, I'm, I've heard people have been arrested for being dressed in replica military fatigue. Yeah, I, I, I wish someone, uh, I wish uh, the person who has said he talked to the lawyer this must could quote the exact section of the law that uh, is being violated so that we debate that point from a point of information. Because as, 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 as I sit here, I am not aware of any law that uh, makes that an illegal move. That one I have to say. But right. if, if then it is about the law, the law will, will take its course. But as at now, I just think it's about political organization and mobilization. It's an effective strategy, actually. Right. Let's ben, take a ben, quick ben, if you go to 20 my, seconds. Yeah, if you go to my village, 
and you meet people who do not know how the military or security agencies dress, if they see a member of the Women Brigade, they may actually get confused. They may think this is actually a member of the National Security Agency. And you don't even need to know the constitution very well to know that impersonating anybody, especially a public officer, a military officer, a policeman is illegal. All right.